I did a forward flip and I slipped and I fell. I looked at my arm, I'm like, I think I dislocated my arm. And we ran to Mr. Robles and, we, and he's just like, go, go to the nurse now. I got there and then the nurse wasn't there. It's like, you okay? And I'm like, I need help. Can I have some help? And they're, they just called mom and dad and started asking me, giving me ice packs. I laid down and I wanted to scream, call 911, forget my parents. Because I don't, and then I, because I tried to move and because they were almost here, I'm like, I can't move. We're in shock. Like, just can I have help now, please? Trying not to cry and make it worse. Yeah. It just feels like you're alone. No one's on your side. That's a pretty um, intense injury. Mm -hmm. And I think and when that... you got there, you're just like, you took one look at it and you're just like, just call 911. Yeah. Call 911. When someone gets injured, and um, asking for help or getting help for that person, I think is like the number one thing most people would do, especially for a 10 year old kid. And the fact that that wasn't happening, I couldn't process that. Honestly, I still can't, I don't understand. And so if that's their policy and they're tied by that policy, the policy needs to be changed mm -hmm. because she was really hurt and that no one there could recognize that or didn't is very concerning because I send my kids to school thinking, you know, if something does happen, they will get help. The Washington State guidelines for districts are they don't call EMS or they don't suggest to call EMS until the bone protrudes from the skin. But there are other caveats that indicate shock, the student's not able to move a large part of their body, things that they didn't, I don't think, take into consideration or maybe weren't trained to do so, I don't know. Um, if you look at the Red Cross guidelines, if you have a deformed extremity in any way, that's an EMS call.